to pull up the phase where they propagate with that uh, virus uh, sooner in the season? So in other words, we have to be thinking about, we have to be worried in June. We're, we're, I, I know the DECD and the Department of Public Health and the epidemiologists that are that work on this are, are already strategizing and, and looking a little deeper now, peeling back the layers and saying, what are we gonna do about next year? Typically, the triple E threat is a three-year threat. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the um, gypsy moths. You know, they come and they come in a wave and all of a sudden they disappear for, for 10 or 15 years and then they come back for a couple of seasons. It's much like that here. So the triple E um, is a three-year uh, threat generally and um, I think we got the worst of it they said um, uh, we might not see it as bad next year but we're also going to be better prepared for it not we they um, and they might give better direction to towns to be prepared for it uh, really serious stuff and um, very rare when you consider uh, the number of people and God knows how many mosquitoes were out there but but still it's a threat and we have to take it seriously I went to the SCARA annual meeting. SCARA is the um, the Southeastern Regional Action Committee. They're the folks that put that have state funding, federal funding for substance abuse. Um, they deliver the Narcam to police and, and um, first responders. They're in our schools doing surveys. They're making presentations uh, of anti-drug and, and prescription drop-off. That's where that comes from. And they had their annual meeting up at the Norwich um, in. Um, I guess last, uh, wait, maybe it was this week, last week, and um, um, they continue to do good work and we continue to support them as they support us. Um, I mentioned the census meeting already. The traffic, I did have that traffic meeting that was referred to by Penny and others. Um, good turnout. Um, and we have another meeting this coming Monday at 6 o'clock. Well, the discussion started very raw and emotional. Different neighborhoods represented and people, you know, just furious with speeders and people that just blow through stop signs and all that. And, and we, um, really the discussion kind of worked itself to a what can we do about it. Uh, there are things that police can do about it and, and public works can do about it, but there's p things that we might be able to do as a committee about it too. So we're going to get together again and talk about how we can uh, create a PR campaign, a public service campaign um, uh, say, uh, for safety messages. And really we've talked about it in here before. It's a behavioral issue that if we can get people to start talking about respect um, as they sit anonymously in their car driving from neighborhood to neighborhood, that they should still show kindness and respect to fellow citizens in other neighborhoods that they're driving through. And we want to get that message out there, and I think there's ways to do that. The, uh, the committee, the, the, the citizens that came who are very engaged and um, are, already have a ton of great ideas. So we'll have an easel on Monday night. We'll be writing down ideas, and uh, we might have to meet a time, another time or two to pare down those ideas to a workable um, uh, branding of an idea and then how to how to display that uh, very 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 happy about that I went to the Christian uh, the Harvest Christian Fellowship had their 50th anniversary um, a, lot, a couple Saturdays ago I went to that and and um, and celebrated with them their 50 years there fundraising they have land I don't know if you know this they have land in a rear lot on North Bridebrook Road it's on the prison side of the road if you will and I'm trying to think it's just I don't know if it's before or after the, the I forget which side of the 95 it's on, um, but it's um, it's a, it's a lot they they've owned for several years and they're fundraising to put a church on it, um, and it's a it's a a terrific um, group of, of people from all over regional uh, um, church in nature, and uh, they are they're on their way to fundraising they're 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 almost there. Um, we I went to a. F um, a wonderful ceremony for a wonderful guy, Bud Lamarine, who spent 61 years in this town as a firefighter and was loved by all. Um, and um, he, um, the, the family and the Niantic Fire Department uh, built a patio on the side or the rear of their building for, um, you know, the, for their barbecue and just to hang out outside on a, on a nicer day. And they've, they've, they christened it uh, the Bud Lamarine patio and, uh, and, and paid, we paid great tribute to uh, Bud 
and his family for their dedication to the town, and that was a couple Saturdays ago. Um, coming up, the the breast cancer walk is this Saturday already. Um, is that the one you walk across southeastern Connecticut? Yeah, like, they walk. They like start in Old Saber. Miles Saber. Saber. Uh, yeah. It's basically the, the length of a <laughs> marathon. A marathon. It's it's significant, and I think that's this Saturday. They walk through, and when they walk through, uh, typically the Niantic Main Street group uh, paints the town pink. And we'll have pink pumpkins all over the place. We were out there the other night painting pumpkins. Um, the Oyster Fest comes up in a week. And we've this is the new improved Oyster Fest, the second annual. There will not be an admissions uh, price this year. Um, so everybody can kind of waltz in, get some oysters, listen to a really cool band. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, the music's um, pretty good. And... Um, <laughs> And, um, and and have I think there'll be a beer tent as well. But then we've also combined it with um, a festival on Main Street, a kind of an antique or um, is it an antique festival? No, it's basically a. a I mean, a, everyone's going to be involved. It's Smith trinkets, Makers, all the stores, yeah. every, pretty much everyone. Yeah, involved there'll be. In but the, it's in, in outside vendors will be coming yeah. in for this. A, a kind of a street fest. Um, so that's um, the twelfth. Yes. Yes. October 12th and we're encouraging people to come down we're hopeful for a good day and it ends at 530 because of the uh, um, the triple E we'll get a let's get a hope for a freeze before then yeah well then again I kind of like the warm weather well, I'm just saying one night and there's a golf ball drop and that's where they're making their money is we want everyone to buy bunches of golf balls and they're gonna put a, a ladder truck up in the air and dump these golf balls down and whatever golf ball is closest to the pin or the various pins something yeah. will win prizes and the, the legit prizes is like two thousand uh, dollar visa gift card and, and, and things I mean there's all sorts of things so we encourage people to go online or come to where to buy their golf balls I think the clerk's office it's online only yeah okay and you can buy them probably that day as well will the street be closed for any time no, no. we're not closing the street um, for that um, I have FOI hearing Monday, as you remember. I went up there a couple of weeks ago. Um, we are the test case on the, the new law for FOI abusers. Um, we are in uh, sitting with the FOI commission, with the um, complaint, or the person we complained about. I guess um, um, he's the plaintiff. If I don't know what he is, but uh, we we've turned. A, pr a frequent FOI complainer and uh, for excessive FOIs, and we will go to the the continuing the continuance of that hearing on Monday, and hopefully set a precedent for the rest of the state. I'm making a recycling video. Uh, you heard a little bit about recycling, and I think our general generally our citizens don't. Um, Remember we had Justin in here talking about garbage and recycling a couple mm -hmm. months ago mm -hmm. when Joe was out. We talked about that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna put that into action. We're gonna make two videos. One about trash can etiquette because because we because you got to keep your cans four feet apart and you know when the lid breaks, call them. They'll replace the lid and and all that other stuff. And the fact that if you put recycles in the garbage can, we get penalty. We get fined for that. So we dump our garbage up at um, even the new plant. They, there's, there's people that kind of look on a scaffolding and look, and they know that this is East Lime's trash going down the conveyor belt. And they see a bunch of paper, cardboard, and glass. They, they write us up, take a snapshot, and send us a fine. So we really, it's important that we recycle when we're supposed to recycle. And, and also, the same thing happens at the recycle plant when we have things in the recycling that don't belong to. So we want to get, there's such thing as trash etiquette. And um, maybe I'll buy a, like Oscar the Grouch uh, puppet and he'll work with me or something, I don't know. But um, we're gonna make a couple videos and, and just and, and put that out there. We have stickers going on the cans as well throughout town to try to inform people about what is recyclable and what isn't. And it, you know, there's a lot of confusion. Mr. Hardy, you brought up that only one and two plastics can go in there now. Yeah. And I don't know if everyone I didn't, knows I that. I didn't know that. Right. And I try to be vigilant. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> yeah, no. so I get um, the blessing of the animals is this Sunday at St. John's um, Green. I think other churches do it too, but I know about this one. At noon on Sunday at St. John's Green uh, is the blessing of the animals in their annual St. Francis ceremony. So if you have a pet, Bring it 
he or she down to St. John's Green, pray for good weather, and uh, Father Tony will uh, bless your, your, your member of your family. Um, I don't, you can tell I don't have a pet. Um, I think you do. I, yes, you do. I, I think do. we should get you. We're going to get you no, one. Marlene, I, I have a fish. What, you have a cat? Uh, in a bowl like this big. What about the cat? Um, there's, um, I do have a cat. It's Marlene's. It's not mine. Okay. Um, there's something else. Blessing of the fleet. There's something else. Um, oh, I do have it. I'm sitting on a committee beginning next week to talk about um, next, next, this coming June, there'll be an, for better, for lack of a better word, an op sale. And, you know, it's not op sale, but it's, it'll be tall ship parade coming into New London. Um, they will be, and, and this will go off better than the last one. Um, <laughs> we won't be involved. They'll be, they'll be um, in Niantic Harbor on Wednesday night, or I think it's a Wednesday, it's a Wednesday night. Hmm. And that night, the, the Navy wants to beach one of their um, oh, their again. crafts again yeah. on our beach. Oh, that was great. That, that, was, that was, awesome was awesome last time. Yeah. We've gotten a commitment for the Navy to pull up one of their, what is it, amphibious mm -hmm. uh, machines right up onto the beach again. Yeah, and they'll be on a Wednesday night, so we'll, we'll, we'll have something funky going on, and it, it's, it's, it's like June 10th or something. And I'll have more details. The, the committee work starts, and I'll, I'm on that committee, um, I think Monday or Tuesday of the first meeting. Um, looking forward to that. That will be a big thing. And, I, and there'll be a special announcement coming out this Friday. Um, more than likely, today's Wednesday, so two more days, about a special enhancement to Niantic Main Street that we're very excited about, and we're just waiting for the ink to dry on that one. And, um, um, and, I'll, and I'll whisper to you guys what it is after the meeting. How's that? Okay. Um, I think that's all I have. Anything else for anyone? That was far too long. Um, uh, yes, could you give us an update on <laughs> the uh, police, um, <clears throat> the new police oh, yeah. building? Oh, that. Yes. So that, um, the cost overruns. Well, there isn't. Uh, so it's there isn't. The, you're talking that there's a wish list. Yeah. So. And then the committee is going to pair this down to yeah, what? Th th thanks budget. for reminding me. And I think I, there's going to be a blog on it at some point, but we're just going to have a meeting. The next meeting is Monday on the police safety building. And uh, the, the, the plans that were presented were soundly rejected by the committee. Of course, we don't have $5.8 million. We know we have a budget, but we asked the architect to come in and what would it be to, to build this building as new if we had to replace everything? including air handlers, which right now are four years old and don't need replacing, and a roof and parking lot and all that. And he came up with a, a cost list. When we started the school discussion, if you remember when Dr. Lombardo <coughs> came in, he had a wish list of what he'd love to see the schools look like, including outdoor amphitheaters, mm -hmm. and everything was included for $100 million. And that's much what happened last Monday. As you know, we ended up building our three schools, keeping the three schools, and, and doing it for far less money. In fact, a th uh, almost a third of the less money. And, and we'll, we're going to do the same with the police building. The intention of the police building and buying it was to get the police out of where they are and into this building as cheaply as possible. And we're going to do that. We, we feel we have enough money. And in, in speaking to the architect today, um, he went, actually I sent him an email. He didn't get back to me. He said, sorry, I didn't get back to you. And believe me, we think uh, we're very aware of the dicey position the project uh, is in relative to the referendum approval, of course. But for us architects and engineers, it is solvable, and we, we know how to get to the, the bottom line. The concepts and estimate is a beginning point for us, and we want to share our money forecasts as soon as we know them so we can work as a team to reach the goal. Um, and we are having a phone conversation tomorrow. Uh, again, a meeting on Monday. We're, um, <clears throat> the, the public safety building project um, has $2.2 million for renovations to get the police in that building with communication and, and proper security, and that's what we'll do. Um, and, the, and, and Paul's done an incredible job um, 
and, and we're grateful that you know Mr. Daigle does this for a living. So he really kind of brings a lot of expertise, and will be working with the architects and engineers to reach that. So a lot of hoopla was made over over this, over over the uh, social media. But you know, let's just say we're in our infancy stages of determining this, and um, uh, more will come. Well, right now my take is if we are over budget, and these are things that we feel are essential to having this be a successful project, then I think that those items should come back uh, for a public vote. Because I think people are very tired of having projects done and then told that they've come in under budget and then there are these extra charges that sometimes that appear or things that really were needed have been removed have been eliminated in order to stay under budget right so right uh, I think at, at some point I think that um, this board needs to have some information yeah. as people come to us frequently for information about it sure. uh, we need to have some reports on this and what the status is and what is being approved and what is decided that it's outside the range of uh, the money that's appropriated. Right. That's just my we, we won't be in a final position to do that right. until the design is done mm -hmm. and bids are received for for the project. Understandable. But, but updates, um, you know, like I said, we met last Thursday when we first got this information and we have to dig through it and uh, mm -hmm. every committee member is, was tasked to go off and, and, and look at it and uh, Monday night we're going to start we'll go dig through it as a piece as together. a team and uh, eliminate nice to have nice need to haves and if the needs to have require more money it'll be you know before we decide what we will do we will let the board of selectmen understand you know how much money if any is needed to get the needs taken care of and we'll jointly have a, you know make that decision as a board as vice the subcommittee making the decisions decisions okay thank you for the update uh, three members of this commission if you remember sit on that so right. we'll be able to update you okay. um, also at the last meeting I had requested a list of uh, new employees uh, that we um, may not have uh, been informed of that have been hired and so yes I do have a complete list of all town employees but I don't have a list I don't have when the hiring took place and I don't need a list I don't think this board needs a list of the date when every single individual in town was hired but by charter we are supposed to be notified within 30 days of new hires, who they are, and wh where they're going to be, where they're going to be serving. So I don't believe that. Uh, I know, I know we have not had a report on that in the last 30 days, and possibly six, possibly even 60 days. And you know, I don't want to go out in public and introduce myself to somebody, and they say, "Oh, gee, we work for the town. You didn't know that." <laughs> you know, I think uh, that's. We'll go back three months and get a list. I don't think there's, I can't remember if there's anyone on that list. Firefighters, a couple of firefighters. A couple of firefighters, but they came in here and got pinned mm -hmm. that evening, so you know, you're aware of those, and we did a report on those. So other than the firefighters, I might be water and sewer, and we'll, we'll update you on the water and sewer too, even though they're not town uh, uh, employees, they're water and sewer employees. Okay, terrific. Great. Thank you. We'll go to um, um, public, comment. public comment. Yes, any public comment? Uh, yes, ma'am. Good evening, Camille Alberti, Seven Darrow's Court. I have two points I'd like to make this evening. One is um, if this board moves forward with removing the first selectman from the police commission. There's an opportunity to backfill that spot if you choose to go with seven members still. So I would like you to address in the selectmen's response uh, the diversity of the current commission in terms of race, sex, and occupation, and what you will be doing in terms of increasing diversity on that commission. And the second point that I would like to make is that 
you're absolutely right. $2.2 million is what's left for the retrofitting of the building. The number, the latest number that I had seen was 6.1. If you take 5.8 plus three or 400,000 for a new roof, now we're up to 6.1. So I understand it's a wish list, but I have grave concerns about closing that gap between 2.2 and 6.1 without sacrificing the quality and the promises that were made to the town people with what we could get for 2.2. So I'd also like you to address that in the uh, selectman's response. And let's see, was there a third point? Right. I guess that's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Schultz. Mike Schultz, Lover's Lane, East Lime. Uh, thank you for the safety complex update. That was one of the things I was looking forward to get some information because of all that nonsense that was going on online. It was, uh, you know, it, it's like you don't oftentimes get the proper uh, right information unless you attend these <coughs> meetings. There's an awful lot that uh, you you that, that you don't catch. You know, it's on TV, but there's other things you just don't catch unless you're here with other communications. So I thank you for, thank you for that. Uh, one of the other questions I have, which if you could have the answer to possibly, is whether the lawsuit that currently or has existed with the Board of Education has been settled. And if it has been settled, what the dollar amount was. Because uh, it's my understanding that the school was being sued and the attorney's fees thereabouts or the judgment at that point was going to be up like around five, six hundred thousand dollars and I like if there's a change on that or more information I'd appreciate it. Uh, then lastly, um, I know this is up and coming but this police commission thing, uh, will, they, will this commission report to the board of selectmen we need somebody in charge. You're going to have a chief of police that's in charge of all the police. But that guy's got to answer to somebody. And we really need one person at the top, be it the first selectman, which is I think it should be, our CEO, that has to be the person that is responsible for all these events. So I guess I'm you know a little cautious and concerned about uh, the Commission I know they're gonna have they're gonna have a job to oversee things but we need somebody to oversee the Commission somebody to oversee the chief of police and one person is critical in my mind thank you any other comments um, mr. Schultz I don't know anything about the lawsuit and if it's been settled or not during the summer I, I don't know um, that comes from that direction um, there was, I just, uh, there was something that was settled, but then there was some um, appeal or something, or, you know, she keeps on pushing it, uh, or the, the uh, person suing it keeps pushing it, so I don't know. As for the police commission, uh, they don't need overseeing, I mean, nor does um, any other board or commission in town. I mean, we don't have people overseeing. Uh, I don't, as a CEO, oversee the zoning commission. I don't have any say on the zoning commission. I can't tell them what to do, and they make their own decisions, and they make decisions that I don't agree with. Two significant ones this year that I don't agree with, and I don't think it's in the character of our town. But I can't do anything about that either. The board of select, uh, the board of education is a good example. It would run the very same way. I mean, uh, the buck stops with Mr. Newton. Uh, at the Board of Education at the public schools and the buck would stop with our chief of police and overall policing matters um, and the board of the police commission oversees that much like the Board of Ed oversees Mr. Newton. Um, I, I see it working the very same way. Um, most towns, in fact a great majority of the towns don't have um, the CEO of the town on the police commission, as was reported tonight. But um, but this should be synergy, and that's why I think the first selectman should be uh, ex officio of that. But um, 
again, as a sitting member of the police commission, I can't tell them what to do. Uh, even on the police commission, I am one vote out of seven, and some votes haven't gone my way on that commission as well. But that's democracy in action, too. I mean, that's how, that's how we run our town. But I'll speak offline with you and, and hear your thoughts. For sure, and the, when we when we do this ordinance, we will go to a public hearing. And if you've done any other research, and, 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 and you're good at research, uh, if you want to bring anything else forward for our consideration, we're always listening um, for that. Um, um, Camille, I, um, I I guess we weren't clear enough um, on uh, the fact that it isn't six point one million dollars. That's to rebuild the whole building as new, renovate as new. We never brought to the town. We were going to take a building that Honeywell was perfectly fine in the way it was and change it to renovate as new and change everything in the building for $6.1 million. All we said and all we demonstrated was we were going we're to get the, if, it's, if the building's good enough for Honeywell, it's good enough for the police to move in we need to change the security in that building so you know we lock the public out of places they can't be in and and the communications need to be brought in otherwise it's an office building at 2.2 million dollars that extra million dollars that was taken off of the, of the proposal i uh, went down to five million versus six which was the proposal originally including holding cells that was taken off the project and holding cells along with that as fire suppression, with that as sally ports, and with that as a whole lot of things that can be done for a million dollars, should we come back to you and say, listen, we can do the whole building for six million, as we said we could. Um, well, and, and, and obviously 2.775 has already been spent, but you, you see my point. We're, we have 2.2 million to spend to get into that building, and it's our intention to do that. We're not going to change every ceiling tile in the building. We're not going to LED lighting. We're not putting a, a parking lot canopy over the parking lot. Uh, and the, the, that I mean, and again, air handlers that were just redone. A roof that's fine. I think that was done four years ago, and that was that was put out there um, four, six years ago. But it was done already. We don't need a new roof. We don't need a new parking lot. So um, again, it was good enough for Honeywell, it'd be good enough for our police, and it's certainly better than what they've been accustomed to. And the committee that I'm actually not a voting member of either, I'm also an ex-officio to that, um, uh, will, will knows that they have only a certain number of dollars to spend. And although, Mrs. Hardy, I agree with you, it would be better to have $6.1 million and have a facility that will be renovated as new and it'd be shiny and new and, and, and 100% new, I mean, all the mechanics in there, we don't have that. And I'm not sure we're going to go back to the taxpayers f with that. And we're not going to go back to the taxpayers with that. I and mean, we reject that. Um, but we know, we the, the architect knows the budget. He's working toward that budget. The committee will work toward that budget. And all the nonsense that was online a couple of days ago is nonsense. I think my, yeah, sorry, that's not appropriate. It's a silent response. Oh, and as far as the commission personnel, we'll discuss that. Um, and when we are looking to replace the seventh, as we do with, uh, as we would, because there's four people coming off of the commission uh, this January for appointments as well. So we have discussed that in the past. Um, we also um, had a pool of applicants after advertising. I think we advertised for um, applicants to the police commission, and we had a pool of applicants. And uh, while the the pool of applicants wasn't diverse.